Good morning, everybody. It's rather sad to be running the uh, last session uh, before the uh, cl closing event. I think it's been a fantastic three days. And these, uh, these sessions have been really lively, so let's keep up uh, that tradition and feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, I'm Mark Dytham, and I'm an architect from Tokyo. Um, I've been based in Tokyo for 20 years, uh, and our office is mainly an architectural office, but we do a lot of interior work too. We're currently uh, building Google's new headquarters in t Tokyo. Uh, we're working with Sony globally for a new retail concept. We work with Shiseido, we've just built a, um, their flagship store in, in the Ginza. And we've just bu built the biggest uh, bookstore in the center of Tokyo, which we'll talk about later, which has been incredibly successful as other bookstores around the world are closing. So that's why I'm here talking about retail. Um, the great thing about being here at the New Cities uh, Summit is that I am a product of a new city. I was born in Buckinghamshire, and uh, my grandfather's land was uh, commandeered to build the biggest new town in the UK, which was called Milton Keynes. And uh, it was an enormous new town, uh, 250,000 people, which is, seems very tiny compared to the cities we've been talking about in China for the last two, two, two or three days. Um, in the center of Milton Keynes, there was a fabulous, or there still is a fabulous shopping center. And uh, that really made me become an architect. It felt like a spaceship that was being built in the middle of this country, 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 countryside area. Uh, Mission inspired, and I went to, off to Chicago, and uh, that, that later took me to uh, Japan. So retail is, uh, uh, sh shopping and retail is a very dear to my heart. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit before I introduce our distinguished panel on um, retail and how it grew and, and the importance of transport. I think that um, port towns, towns that uh, grew on um, the uh, connection point or the cro crossroads of, um, of, of roads or routes. So we've got in England, there's Melton Mowbray, which is a market town, obviously the port towns and how those towns turned into cities and the industri and in, and industrialization uh, with the train. I always speak with a loud voice. Anyway, um, um, how uh, as the world industrialized, uh, large department stores appeared in London, Gallery Lafayette in Paris about 120 years ago, and how the impact of the car really changed re re retail. And so the strip mall started to uh, appear in the 1920s through to the 1940s and 1950s. And then the development of out of town re retail, sh shopping centers, shopping malls, and more recently, um, the outlet mall. And so the car had been uh, a big inst inst instigator of change in re retail. And so today, here we are with this huge pink ele elephant, a thousand pound gor gor gorilla in the room, which is called the internet. And I think that is gonna be the thing that changes retail uh, in the coming years. It's already changing re 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 retail in many, many ways. So um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, turn to uh, Paul Dalutra, uh, who's CEO of Gallery Lafayette, and uh, liked him to introduce himself and uh, talk a little bit about how the internet is changing your biz business for good and for bad. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Uh, nice to be with you. Um, so, um, what shall I say on me? <laughs> uh, I, I started as a marketeer, so I have worked for uh, P&G during uh, three years in France, and then during 17 years for Mars Incorporated uh, in in chocolate, in pet food, in food, and I have worked uh, around the world. So I got some, uh, some insight of uh, uh, lots of different countries. Uh, then I moved to La Redoute, which is probably a little bit relevant to our discussion today. La Redoute is, for those who don't know, the leading um, mail order company in France. U uh, used to be uh, a, a major brand. And eight years ago, I joined um, Galerie Lafayette and BHV. So you all know Galerie Lafayette, I'm sure. Uh, you don't know, some, some of you might not know BHV, which is a leading 
uh, home equipment department store uh, in, uh, in France. Uh, now, Galerie Lafayette is, uh, is an interesting uh, topic. Uh, most of you have probably visited our store in Paris in, uh, in the last days. Uh, maybe uh, you don't know it's uh, the largest uh, uh, store in, uh, in Europe for sure. Uh, the turnover is 1.350 million euro, so it's quite a phenomenon. Uh, and it might be also the largest store in the world. We don't know. We do not have <laughs> statistics for uh, everything. Um, we get people from around the world. So the topic of uh, matching uh, stores and internet is, of course, uh, very hot uh, because that's... Uh that's uh, a place which is uh, iconic, and we got a lot of requests on uh, better service, better information, and so on, which we have to cope with. So I don't know whether you want me to uh, dig into that now, or whether we should uh, wait for well questions. Well, we should uh, uh, move across to Jean-Charles Jean Decaux. Uh, you all see his name, or his uh, family's name, around the world as I drive, and uh, so it's a, it's a great pleasure to be on the stage with, with you. So Please give a little introduction to yourself and uh, where, you, where you are today and the influence of the internet. Thank you, Mark. Just, so just a few words. It's uh, for sure a pleasure to be uh, in front of you today. It's, um, I'm uh, Jean-Charles Decaux, so second generation of entrepreneur at GC Decaux. My father started the business in 64 wow. from, a, from a scooter. So basically uh, with the vision to finance public services out of advertising on the streets. Wow. And that was his vision back in 64. And uh, since then, basically, the company uh, <laughs> expanded in the second generation uh, with our colleagues all from all over the world who took the company global uh, from one market to 58 markets today. And we basically, we are partnering with um, municipalities from all over the world, uh, airports authorities, metro, subways, uh, shopping centers, uh, retailers, to basically uh, bring new products and services finance through advertising revenue. So it's not only uh, most of our products, I think some of you are familiar with, the advertising bus shelters in most cities uh, all over the world, um, automatic public toilets, the famous free bicycle system that I hope you have been using since you are in Paris for quite some time, um, was pioneered, invented and pioneered and developed by, by our company um, uh, since then. So it's... Um, it's a company doing today 2.5 billion euros of sales. Um, so it's a medium-sized company, I would say, uh, focused on the out of home. So everything which is uh, out of home, from street furniture to transport advertising to um, uh, billboards and digital billboards. Um, and we operate globally and we have 12, today 12,000 uh, colleagues from uh, all over the world. Uh, I think a few things I would like to, to say is that um, I would like to thank uh, Monsieur De La Haute because uh, we make our living because of uh, their trust. Um, uh, I, thanks hope I hope not exclusively <laughs> Galerie Lafayette. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not yet, but we would love to do that. Maybe it's a question of discussion. Uh, but seeing the turnover of Galerie Lafayette, I'm sure we can do more, Paul. But uh, uh, s a joke on the side, um, I it's, it's fair to say that what we have tried to create, it's a new ecosystem uh, where you have product and services on one side and where you have on the other side basically a way to uh, finance uh, substantial infrastructure for municipalities all over the world. And because, as you know, you have um, uh, a lot of weakness in terms of uh, public finances, uh, whether we are talking about the developed world or the emerging world, I think this concept is quite popular today in China, in India, um, in Europe for sure, in the United States, mm -hmm. where we basically can bring uh, those services to, um, to the municipalities or to the transport authorities, thanks to um, basically the big advertisers that are trying to display their brand, their messages across the out of home industry, which is today the second fastest growing media sector after internet worldwide. So moving, I mean, one of the interesting things about re re retail is it is emotional. People like to shop. And I think one of the 
this is why it's quite, this panel's quite important because I think a lot of the sessions have been talking about tra 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 transport, we have to commute, and n nobody was really talking about they like to drive, uh, they like to go on a, a sub 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 subway, but people like to shop. And I think it's interesting as you can buy more and more things online, it means that the actual uh, stores are changing their fun fun function. They're moving away from being a transaction space really to an experiential space, a showroom <coughs> space. And really a qu quest question to, to you, how, how, how are you beginning to cope with that, with, with that shift or are you seeing a shift? From, from more transactional to, well, I <coughs> you are you are gal you are a gallery after all, Gal Gallery Lafayette. But um, it's uh, that that's a lot of lot of people are saying stores are becoming galleries, they're becoming sh showrooms, and the transaction is taking place somewhere else, which is a very difficult business pro pro proposition for for you. I well, would have thought. Well, first, I sh I, I should say from the beginning that uh, we do not pre pretend we know what is going to happen. <laughs> uh, nobody has a fault. Sure. Um, but we don't see all stores being turned into uh, showrooms. Uh, the number of transactions is still growing, although internet is growing very quickly in France. Uh, it's already, or estimated that it's already 30 billion euro in total. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and all bet is that uh, it will account for something like 15% of uh, shopping uh, in France over the next 10 so years. That, so that means we're consuming more, we're buying more things? Because something has to give, yeah? Or, or, I mean, the French market is not really growing. So, I mean, growing slowly and in the categories we are in is, is even decreasing. Right. Apparel is decreasing, for example, right. has been decreasing two or three percent a year over the mm. last five years. Mm. So it's a shrinking market and internet is taking more space right. in that, uh, which probably means that uh, a lot of small, s small stores mm. uh, which are on the edge already today are going to disappear. Mm. So, I mean, since the, since the topic is cities, I would, uh, I would argue, again, we don't know, but I would argue that uh, uh, the situation is going to be even tougher in small cities or in poor locations. Mm. Mm. Uh, but what we see at the same time is that iconic places are becoming even more iconic. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that people are no longer moving away from home and so on, it's not true. That's not what we witness. Uh, we see more and more people traveling longer and longer. I mean, we receive more and more tourists yes. uh, in, in our store in Paris and in, in, in some stores in, uh, in France. Mm -hmm. So movement is still increasing but people are no longer going to move for boring stuff. I mean, uh, what, what is boring is going to be um, treated in a more efficient way. Exactly. And what is entertaining or what is pleasurable is going to, uh, to increase. No, Sean, I think, I think we, we all find, uh, even in Tokyo, we have, um, 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 Amazon is very pre prevalent. So, Toilet paper, children's formula, water. nappy wipes, all comes, and water, a good point, because it's heavy to, to, to get carry, all comes through the internet. But on Saturday, on Sunday, we're out looking. And I think one of the interesting things with the advent of Google and Google Maps, I don't think I want to uh, address to you, is that because we have maps in our pockets now, we're actually able to find things in a much more easier way. And I was just in New York, and that allowed me to find stores that I wouldn't normally find. And we're seeing that trend in t Tokyo too. Stores like Bathing Ape or Stuzzy, the, the cooler, the cooler, young, younger fashions, going to very unusual locations because there's an interesting building there. And the fact that you've got a you've got a map in your pocket will get you to that position. Also, people can tweet and they can send a location to their friends. And so this is actually making cities much more interesting and much more naviga navigatable. So I, I, I wanted to sort of ask you how that's really affecting your business, so, so certainly with the bicycle scheme. I think it's fantastic that with Google Maps, with the bicycle, we can actually navigate the city in a completely different way than we could um, five years ago. I think there is two parts in, this, uh, in, in, in your questions or in your comments. The first one is um, when, when you look today at portfolio of clients, 
you see two interesting things. One, the biggest category in our portfolio is retailer. It's about 15% uh, of our who total business who, who are advertising in, in the out of home industry. So, and this is growing mm -hmm. year after year. Even in France, where until 2007 you had a ban for the retailers on televisions, so you could have said this is basically an inflated number because France has a specific um, rule of law which is quite common in our country, for the good or for the bad. But in that case, uh, after the deregulations, what we have seen is that the, the rate of the retailer in our industry, in the out of home industry, is, is growing. It was 13.8 uh, at that time, is now 15%. The second comment I would like to make as a fact is that the internet um, brands are the fastest growing category in our portfolio. So you see <laughs> the biggest 15% the biggest are the retailers and you see the fastest growing, 166% last year in 2011, is uh, basically are the internet, internet brands. Which being, uh, being being e eBay or Yahoo or being all the big brands. We, we normally never yeah. advertise for free in GCDeco, <laughs> except for our clients. So, so okay. today is present. But, but for, for the, all the internet brands, basically, that you can see around, they, uh, they use basically out of form to convey their, um, their messages and their brands across. So it's quite interesting to see those two facts today. Um, as, as Mr. Delau just said, I mean, it's, it's tough um, to see exactly what's going on. If that's 15% for the retailers, which continue to go up, and it's the internet, how fast it will catch up. But as of today, we see that trend going on. Right. So that's the, the, the first comment. Then uh, I think the question of the mobility within a given city is a key critical question for s city shopping uh, all over the world. Uh, just Again, few few comments. One, when we invented the t the, um, um, the free bicycle system, I remember it was in 1999. Um, we created this, this new ecosystem with free bicycles, with the first half an hour free of charge, and then um, a very limited amount. Um, a lot of people were laughing about it, and they were saying, ah, "Yes, the Deco people, that's good, but is it really something which will?" complement the public transport in a given city. And we said, look what's happening in the Netherlands. In, 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 in the Netherlands, 27% of the traffic in, 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 into the cities are made through bicycle. Right. So this is possible mm. 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 without GC the co, with the co, th that's not the question. Yeah. The question is where the trends are going. And we said bicycle could become, um, in major cities all around the world, a major trend to basically navigate into the city much uh, in a better way. Mm. And it's quite interesting to see that in Paris, which was not basically a city very, let's say, friendly to bicycles, it's now one of the largest city in the world, the largest city in the world with free bicycle system. Uh, it takes about 2% of the traffic now through bicycles in less than four years. It's 35 million users every year. And it's interesting because 20% of the users are saying, if I don't have Velib, I'm not doing the trip. So it basically increments the mobility within the city. It's, uh, and I think this is a key factor to talk about the city shopping because it's easy, it's almost free of charge. It's one euro per day, five euro per week, or 29 euros per year. I'm not doing that to advertise. No. I'm just doing that to understand that the business model works because it's almost free of charge. Yeah. If you charge too much, okay. you won't get it. So that's, I think, important. If you, if you look at one of our most successful stations, is the one in front of Galerie Lafayette. No, but that's, that's again a fact. He keeps doing advertising. Huh? <laughs> so He's a great guy. No, no, <laughs> not <laughs> not you have in Paris. The, I, I looked at the numbers. And the Galerie Lafayette station, Paul, I will send you, <laughs> it's one of the top five stations in Paris in terms of Velib commuting um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You should advertise on the bicycle. Well, it's true <laughs> that <laughs> people are no longer going coming by car. Yeah. Car is marginal now. But yeah, I think no this, th but there's this, we were talking about this uh, earlier in, in the different uh, s sessions about multi-modal multi transport. So you're using 
the train, then you're using the bicycle. And I, I think you can actually take that analogy across to the internet and or, or across to re retail and having multimodal shopping or multimodal re re retail where exactly the same way you're using the internet for a certain thing, but you're using, you're going to a supermarket for something else and uh, you're going to Gallery Lafayette to buy your Rolex, you know, there's, there's a... Yeah, but let, let me tell you that it's, it's not new. Actually, it's not, it's not by accident that Galerie Lafayette is next to the uh, Saint-Lazare railway station. Yeah, sure. Because when we opened, mm -hmm. uh, we used to sell through catalogues. So we were sending uh, paper catalogues around Paris, mm -hmm. and people were coming by train. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's not a really new idea. But you, you were selling, you, w do, do you, you sold from a catalogue to people out in front in the front. No, no, we were sending catalogues to, 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 to draw to people to the okay. store, and okay. they were coming by our way. And but do you have an online pr presence now where you sell? Do you sell anything through through the internet, or you, uh, or do you prefer people to come to the store? Obviously. No, 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 no. We uh, we believe it's a great opportunity. Mm. It's a great opportunity for department stores in general, uh, because you know we are we are selling fashion. And customers in fashion are not loyal by definition. Mm -hmm. They go to many shops, they like cherry picking. So at best, a, a good customer for us is going to achieve 25% uh, of its spending in our store. So if we can put our store in his bedroom, mm. or in her bedroom, I should say, uh, I mean, this 25 can become 35. Yeah. And that's 50% growth. So uh, we view that as a great opportunity to really uh, make a step change. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. Thank you. So um, a question to uh, you, Jean Charles. Um, I've got a list. I've got a long list of questions here. So, <laughs> and I haven't got through very many. So I've got 15 minutes to get through my questions. I wanted to talk about tech technology and your out of home ad advertising, and today we can buy things without actually going into a store with uh, QR codes. And so if, if are you looking at anything like that in terms of, of selling outside of stores in the urban environment? I was interested in, is there, any, is there any movement in that trend? I think there is a movement which is for the time being quite slow because we, again, we depend from a, a very sophisticated ecosystem. We depend from what we call the M payment. So we need to be capable to basically do the transactions on the streets. Um, and this is, it, this is growing slowly because this is also a, a, a gross combination with the mobile terminal, the mobile phones, uh, as well as the, as the uh, smart cards. Um, what we have tried, um, ex we have experienced in Seoul, in Korea, as well as in Santiago de Chile subway, to create some virtual um, shopping experience within the subway. Wow. So it's, it's, a click and collect concept, wow. which is something that I think will 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 get traction. It's again, it's difficult to s to see um, not if but when. Mm. But we think that for certain things, you could uh, say that uh, when you dwell time in a subway, it's um, it's basically about uh, four to five minutes waiting for the train. You could say that some of the people. Um, taking, for example, the subway in Shanghai to give you a number, 7.4 million users daily in Shanghai subway. It was 2 million in 05. So you could say out of the 7.4 million, uh, as a service, more than a, uh, than a, a, a product proposition, mm -hmm. as a service to them, you could say that some of them could be pleased to click and get delivered some of the stuff that we were talking about before yeah. uh, uh, in, in the retail environment. So this is something that, yes, for uh, uh, out of home, basically company, we are looking very seriously. And I must say that the two first experiences in Korea shelters, in the bus shelters, in the bus platforms, wow. on one side and in the city, in the subway in Santiago de Chile, mm. was encouraging, I must say. It's wow. not an amazing start, to be honest, but it's something that could become tomorrow um, uh, more and more appealing for brands uh, because it could be both at the same time. It could be a good advertising for the brands to be there mm. and at the same time a good service to the, co co to the consumers right. to basically offer that possibility to click and collect later mm. um, your, your products. Yeah. So this is, yes, certainly Average. something that the connectivity in our industry is going to become a big thing. 
right. out of home in the past was mainly something to drive traffic. Tomorrow it will more and more be something more connected for the brands to mm -hmm. the consumers in okay. terms of engagement. Within, ga within Gallery Lafayette, are there any new te te technologies that you're embracing that are in terms of, of, of point of sale or? Well, um, be before, bef yeah. before moving to technology, I'd like to say, let's not fall into <laughs> the <laughs> usual <laughs> trap <laughs> in retailing. The, the trap for me is to say we are stores or websites selling products. Uh, we believe it's not the right way to look at it. The right way to look at it, when you can, is to say we are a brand serving customers. And uh, if those customers want more uh, convenience, better service, better treatment, if they want to be better known and so on, maybe the web can help, maybe technology can help. That's an additional tool to treat those customers. Yeah. And, 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 and really, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, there were, there were time at Galerie Lafayette when people were believing they were, t uh, we were stores selling products. So when I was going to those stores, the only talks were about more square meters yes. and more products. Okay. Yep. And nobody were, was busy with what do we do for customers? Are we improving our fashion uh, offer? And so on. So exactly the I experience mean, we're having with Sony is that they are moving away from the big box re re retailers, whether it's whether it's <laughs> Fry's or Best Buy, where you just buy the product. No one knows anything about the product. These products are extremely sophisticated. I don't have my Sony camera with me now, but um, I'm advertising, by the way. Um, they're, they're doing they so when they're moving to small stores. They're smooth m m moving to. Uh, all of their sales staff knowing exactly what's going on. Somebody's going to look at the alpha range of cameras. And this service, personal service, and trust that they can take the camera back to that person and they will replace it without, without any question. So think about ap 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 Apple. You walk in and take anything back. You can buy any Apple product online, but we like to go to the store. You know, it's very interesting that it's very, you know, I think I am lugging a box back, but there is something about shopping, something emotional about shopping. I think you touched on a really important point. I think that's why retail will always survive. And it isn't necessarily, as you said, about being a gallery, but it's about good service. And so uh, going on from that a little bit, I wanted to talk about technology. That's what we're here for. But um, um, how about, um, it's, it's, it's going to come out wrong, but customer profiling. You know so much more about your customer today because you can record the transactions uh, that they purchased before. Uh, you know what they bought in the last year, when they could come up on your till. But also now, um, you know, you can see their, their Facebook profile, um, all sorts of things. And I wonder if the, what, where, where do you think that may be le leading in terms of making your service to the customer better? Well, first, we don't need Facebook to know, uh, <laughs> to know about customers. Um, there are very simple uh, things we can do and we are doing. For example, we can, uh, we can delegate to our key salespeople uh, the ability to, uh, to create a small customer file uh, and then to communicate with their, uh, with their best customers when, when they get new stuff in the store. Uh, that's Very simple. Nostrum are doing that, for example. Yes, yes. The best salespeople at Nostrum have a list of uh, 200 customers, and when they know that this lady likes red bags, when they need a new red bag, she gets an email. So. You don't need to be very to sophisticated to uh, to start doing really, uh, really something. Uh, at Gallery Lafayette, technology is still uh, is still a nightmare because imagine that uh, ten years ago we were not using code bar for uh, selling, right. so we had no idea of what what was going in and what right. what was going out. So we spent a lot of time uh, sorting that out, which fortunately uh, has been achieved. So it's a basis for, uh, for using internet, mm. of mm. course. Uh, and three years ago, we had 30 different customer databases, <laughs> not communicating, <laughs> not compatible. Sounds just like Sony. And so on. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> quite sure everybody yeah, has gone, yeah, has sure gone through that. Same, yeah. Everybody has gone through that, except new businesses. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot easier for new businesses. Very interesting. So we, we, we have gone through that transformation, uh, and now we can segment our customer database uh, not so much in the usual way, you know, according to how much you spent, how many times you came to the store and so on, but uh, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, attitude to fashion. So we have eight different categories of customers according to their attitude to fashion. Interesting, interesting. And we do communicate with them in a different way if they are, let's keep it simple, traditional or, uh, or interested <laughs> in luxury. I'm not going to <laughs> tell <laughs> 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 myself. Um, and, and, and it's suddenly when you have that, that, that you can get more sophisticated in terms of uh, <coughs> technology. Yeah, I know my son is, uh, my son is two, and uh, he's very sophisticated in te technology. Um, went into a new store, and there's um, uh, an LCD monitor. And it's quite low, and he goes and swipes it, and then says, Papa, broken, because he assumes it's going to be like an iPad. And so children, people are going to become more sophisticated. And the question to you, are there new, new technologies that you're looking at which could inspire the audience um, in terms of interactive te te technologies you're putting into your public spaces? Yeah, it's, it's clear that uh, the transformation is, um, is, is coming big time in the, in the out-of-home industry. Um, we have, let's say, two parts in the industry which are looking for different technology. One is the, the digital transformation, and the other one is the connectivity we were talking about before, which is not exactly uh, always coming through the same technology channels. On digital, um, it's clear that the new devices that you can access, both LEDs, LCDs, are becoming now accessible in terms of price and are clearly transforming the experience from an advertising experience in an airport, in a subway. It's very interesting in a subway when you go to China, and uh, not in China, but we've seen that recently. Uh, uh, you go to, uh, to the subway and you see some kids looking at the screens, the digital screens, the LED screens, and trying to do what your son is doing. <laughs> I'm not so sure they are two years old, <laughs> but um, so your son is very, he's yeah, very, he he's, he's, he's he like his dad, no? he's, he's, yeah, he's amazing. using a lot of technology, but you see the kids, now the natural Thing is movement <laughs> is to touch what they see digital, to touch it and to move it. And, uh, and, and, and this is not yet interactive. But <laughs> on digital, so yes, the digital is already for us uh, a bit more than 5% of our revenues. Mm. So it's, it's, um, it, it, it was basically roughly nil in 2008. Mm. So now the, 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 the technology is accessible in terms of mm. price mm. because the capital expenditure is quite huge yes. and the technology was not yet there. Now, I think the big things is will, will be between technology, between digital transformation and connectivity. Yes. And the connectivity will come through um, the touch screens we were talking about for a certain um, environment. Will come also through uh, the e-shopping we were talking about in some specific uh, locations such as the shop shopping malls, uh, subways, metros, airports. So yes, it's in, in the airport industry, it's already 30% of our revenues is coming from digital. Wow. That was wow. yeah. almost basically zero some years ago. And uh, when you think that the dwell Amazing. time in the airport environment is two hours and 40 minutes, <laughs> uh, you can imagine that you can do certainly much more in terms of this uh, digital transformation. But again, as it was said recently, I think it's key not only to bring about, to think about maximizing revenues. It's key to think about what kind of service I can provide to my customers through the digital sure. um, strategy. And, and this is quite key in our, in our environment. That's absolutely. why connectivity will be critical. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, again, with the, with the brands we're working with, the fact that we can launch a product through the store, through a global chain of stores on a single day, through um, all of the connected screens is absolutely amazing. And there's a central curation. It's curated locally for the text, but we can drive new Im images across all the stores, which is what you're talking about. We have 13,000 digital screens all over the world, 25 countries, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, completely centralized. It's amazing. If, if needed. Yeah. If needed, but normally the basically 
our Chinese operation run the Chinese operation, our French sure. run the French, the US. But if tomorrow, which is the case for a big IPO happening uh, this week, basically they want all the screens globally. They can get it um, wow. uh, basically centrally. So it's 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 something which will change also the way you look at the, at the out of home industry going forward. Could you talk a little bit about facial recognition in that area too? Because we're seeing now um, cat cameras which can detect age and sex, and so when you're looking at a when you're looking at an ad, it actually can decide what is the best. It's no good putting um, 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 an Audi car ad up when there's uh, a teenager, a young girl to teenager looking at it. So I know that I know that technology exists. Um, I, is, is it something that which is coming down the pu pipeline that there are ethical is issues with the whole thing yes, too? I just wondered what it's, uh, your it's thought is on that. It's very experiential today in, in, in some, um, in some, uh, with some clients. It's not very popular because don't forget that the, the, the strength of the out of home is that basically you, you can't turn it down. You <laughs> can't switch it, switch it off. So you have to be careful with yeah. those kind of things yeah. in, in public environment. The strength can become a weakness. Mm. And uh, we are in a public environment where you have basically all sorts of um, um, uh, people. Um, and this is something where we are quite cautious uh, of, of doing on the public domain. Uh, <laughs> because this is not exactly the same when you are in front of your computer or with your mobile phone, which is part of basically you. your in your in intimacy, yes. where in, in, in the public domain, where you are in a shopping mall or you are in the subway or you are in the streets, it's something which is much more critical. And we had a big debate in France recently in the French subway, where um, we had those basically facial recognition system, which was highly criticized. And, um, and uh, w we, we are working on it, but quite cautiously, um, especially because of um, the, the, the public uh, domain of our industry, uh, but technology-wise, this is feasible. Um, this, is, this is this is not, I will say, very complex. Now, given the the, the, the industry we operate, is something where we have to be uh, we have to work with the regulator on this. If not, we will have a we could have a, a very strict ban on uh, face recognition on the streets uh, for obvious reason that we can all imagine here privacy yeah. and all on this. So we have to work uh, carefully with the regulator uh, on a country by country basis, which is not an easy task. Thank you. We're already into the last 15 minutes, so um, I'm going to open the floor up for que questions. Whoa, whoa, wow. what? <laughs> Our friend from Sweden. Um. <laughs> Hello there, my oh. name is Michael Bjorn from Ericsson. Uh, I have a question, or actually two interrelated questions, about changing uh, exp or expectations from, from, from con consumers and how you meet that. Uh, we did uh, a study recently, uh, this week only, where we looked at 13 major, major cities and what drives satisfaction with life in cities. And actually shopping is the number two. Number two. Mm. Shopping number is one? the number two. I thought you were about one. What's, what's <laughs> number one? It's actually restaurants and cafes and pubs, ah, especially okay. in Paris, of course. Especially in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but shopping is, is uh, yeah. globally number yes. two. Yes. So it's a big, big draw for, for cities. You know, it, it makes the city experience unique. You should now say it loudly because uh, uh, Paris authorities believe that it is culture. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, then That's I would say shopping, That's shopping, shopping <laughs> so they are That's right great. because shopping is actually culture. So, so well, uh, you know, you, but, you but this means, but at the <laughs> same time, we also see, so my question is, we also see that the internet is kind of transforming the level of knowledge, of course, among yeah. people. So there's a big risk that this draw, this major draw is kind of fading away because people see the same experience elsewhere. And another important issue here is when we looked about 10 years ago at shoppers, what they are looking for, we could clearly see a certain type of people were looking for bargains. Another, and I'm oversimplifying here, just like you were doing before. Another type of people were looking for l luxury goods, l deluxe experience, and so on and so forth. What we see now, and this is a major fundamental shift, is that the people are looking for bargains are also the people who look for the big brands and the deluxe experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
the money is kind of going away out of that at the same time as the expectation of the experience is going up. How are you handling this kind of a situation uh, from a city perspective, I think? Well, it has always been um, the, the positioning of Galerie Lafayette to, uh, to mix luxury, fashion, and Bourgain. We believe that uh, if you really want to be a big player and not a marginal one, uh, you have to make um, dream affordable. So it, well, we work very hard at that. And, and, and given the success and the traffic in our store, it's actually hard work to keep affordability because all the luxury brands want to eat all the space. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, internet is, is, uh, is, is interacting now um, we view for iconic places, we view it as a plus because it's, it's more advertising, it's more buzz, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's more communication around the world. So uh, we do take that into account when we, uh, we, we, we get organized. For example, you will see in, in October, we are going to cover the store with the wha what we believe is the largest uh, piece of art met, wi met with light in the world. It's going to be permanent. And uh, one of the idea is, I mean, it's not so much for people to look at it when they are in the street, they won't be able to see it from uh, be behind the uh, uh, la, la Marquise. Mm? So it's really for pictures, for movie, for going around the world on the net. So you can, you you can use yep. this new tool to, uh, to make your brand even bigger on that. Okay, very good. Next question. I'll go to the man at back then. You um, I, I want to follow up on a discussion about technology and its adoption and adaptation. Near field communications, um, where, where do you see the adoption of the near field communications both in your infrastructure and also related to uh, real-time retail, um, especially for um, smaller brands. All right, now I have to explain near-field communications. Yes, okay. <laughs> but but where, do, where do you see this um, on, your, on, on the adoption rate, so to speak, and especially in emerging economies who seem to be able to leapfrog generations of technology because of their, you know, our, our built-in inherent legacy systems. I think it's, uh, sorry. Yeah, go, go. Uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's clearly a very important question for the, the out-of-home industry. Uh, one, where we see the NFC taking place faster in terms of geography, it's clearly the emerging markets, such as China, India, are going very fast into this, uh, this, uh, this new movement. Uh, by the way, if you look at it, it's two, let's say, emerging markets where we've tried the first e-shopping experience, Korea and Chile. Um, in terms, it was not exactly NFC driven, but it was more image recognition driven, but it was basically the same concept. So one, yes, the, 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 the youngest basically, or the most dynamic economies are going very fast into that technology. Second, in our industry, in the out of home industry, where we see those NFC uh, that could make sense is where we have dwell time. And where do we have dwell time? We have dwell time in the, in the bus stations, where basically you are, whatever you do, you have to wait for the bus. The same in the metro on the subway environment. Again, a bit what was said before, it's not to shop more, it's to basically bring a new service to your customer on the streets. It's again, service oriented, not so many product oriented. Technology will enable us to provide a new service to facilitate basically the, the people living. So shelters, bus stations, uh, metros, airports in some ways, uh, where you have those famous 200 and two, uh, two hours and 40 minutes uh, dwell time. Yeah. That's where NFC, I think, in the next five years, will completely change the way um, uh, our industry will be, will be structured. And we, we think that will be a new um, revenue stream and a, a new way of putting basically virtual shops into our uh, products, or what we call the shop window. 
um, will be, uh, we have 1.2 million locations worldwide and um, 300,000 of them are shelters, stations, in which you could say that uh, uh, five or 10% could be transformed into virtual shop. The click on collect, the famous click on collect on NFC will be clearly one of the technology um, to lead that transformation in terms of connectivity within the streets. I think one thing in an airport which would be fantastic to do is to buy your duty free uh, in Paris and pick it up in Tokyo and swap the thing around so we're not flying. I, I forget how many, sure. click how on collect, many thousands of tons of, of, of bottles and liquor we fly around to the world with each day. And what a waste when we can buy it from a kiosk and pick it up in Tokyo. But we yeah. actually ship it there by boat. We don't fly tons. Virgin Atlantic uh, takes off the champagne bottles after, after they've given everybody a glass of champagne in bit business class. They take off those six b bottles before they fly because it saves them tons and tons and tons of fuel each year. I haven't answered the <laughs> Sorry, question on technology, <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe I, it's time to do. <laughs> With your priority, we, we have three priorities in terms of uh, treating customers. One is we want to find their way. We want them to find their way easily in the store. And iPads, uh, cell phones, uh, iPhones, for example, uh, can help. So within, uh, within days now, we are going to have that technology uh, in, <laughs> in our store in Paris. And uh, according to your nationality, you will get that in your language. Uh, automatically on the phone, uh, so finding finding the way. Then it's it's very upsetting once you have chosen something uh, to get told that it's not available. <laughs> that's that's yeah. about that's in ten percent of cases hmm? uh, if that happens. So um, we, with a, with a strong website, uh, we are going to be and that's again a matter of days. We are going to be able to say to the customers you pay and you get that at your home within days. It's in stock in the warehouse, yeah. we can give it to you. Yeah. yeah, so that's, and the, thir uh, the, third, the third thing is they come for a strong experience. So uh, we, I mean there are lots of things you can do, most of them are gadgets, uh, but one potentially is very big, it's to replace the uh, thousand of dummies we have in the stores by video screens. So we are going to test that because that will give us a lot more agility and probably a better presentations because all people in the stores most of the time are not very good at uh, displaying uh, closes on the dummies. And, and I have a data I think that could be interesting is that uh, d despite the fact that you have a lot of technology today available with your uh, basically GPS system, we've done a research in the French market recently where we have seen that, for example, in our industry, 90% 90, 90 of the people that are using a GPS are also using basically the, um, the, um, the out of home sites. So it shows that it's complementary again, as we, yeah. as we said before. Yeah. It's, it's not only uh, the web against basically the more traditional stuff, it's how you embrace and how you enrich the, 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 the shopping experience. Yeah. And technology enable us to do things that we were not capable to do before but it's not certainly shifting away the whole industry. It's basically bringing more opportunities to uh, uh, give a better service to our clients, which is, at the end of the day, what, what we are here for. Fantastic. We have five minutes left. I'm going to try and take two questions. So, um, This is a question about Gallery Lafayette. Um, you've explained very, very clearly that you build up an iconic concept, which you have and which I enjoy and uh, respect very much but that sh stores in regional locations and smaller cities will take a hit in the future. What happens to your regional strategy? Are you going to be closing stores in smaller cities or does the strength of your Paris icon give you the robustness to also build strong regional physical stores? Well, <coughs> first, a chain of stores is is not forever. I mean, you can open, you can close, it has to move. The idea that you, you should not touch anything is, uh, is, is, is a dream. So we have closed stores in the past and we will close stores in the future. And we will also open new ones. Now, uh, we believe that out of the 60 stores we have, uh, 40 are for sure 
uh, to stay because they can, in their way, be iconic places for uh, our regional um, customers. Uh, the other ones, we have to invent something. And uh, it is very clear that there is an opportunity around mixing uh, a store concept and a service concept. Now, in a small city uh, today, we cannot feature the one million items we are selling in our Osman store physically. But if we get them on the website tomorrow, uh, those products will be available in chalon sur saone or Béziers and small cities uh, uh, at, at very low cost. So that could, again, revive the, uh, the strength of those small locations. And by the way, I don't know whether you have that in, you, in your countries, but in France, it is very clear that most of the pure players today are opening stores because they realize that the combination of a website and a physical location is a plus and is going to help us to survive the big attack of brick and mortar people moving to the web. Okay, one last question from Maylee. We have a hand up patiently, sorry. Thank you. It's Maylee Tan from City. I've got a question for both of you, actually. So stores are driven by an economic model, and back to a, a question earlier on NFC. As you have out-of-home advertising um, on billboards and you have shops moving away from dummies to, tran um, to uh, plasma screens, for instance, what about connecting shop windows to the cashier via digital payment channels so people can actually browse and buy without actually having to go to a physical cashier? and that maybe being NFC driven through your smartphones, is that something that you're thinking about as well? Why not? I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing to go into an Apple store with an app on the phone, you pick up something from the shelf, you pay for it from your phone and walk out the store. It's remarkable. <laughs> but you know what you want at that point. Th this is clearly something for sure that is the yeah. end game, let's say. Yeah, yeah. If we can do that, um, technology will, will certainly be there to do it. So now we have to find our way, but this is something we are looking very seriously at it. I've been told very generously, I have one more question, so. Thank you, Joe Oliver from uh, We Impact. We do sustainable lifestyles. There's a, a, a huge trend in emerging uh, markets about immersive experiences for brands, um, online and offline immersive experiences. Now, when it, this is particularly for a gentleman from JC Ducor, when, when it comes down to uh, providing value for the local community within these emerging markets. Often the main players are actually the large brands that we all are very familiar with, and they do kind of replication of large malls with the same kind of staff and the infrastructure as well. What provision do you have for, I'd say, local communities, local artisans, um, small businesses, etc., to use your platform which cannot afford above-the-line marketing and yet would benefit the local community for that? Um, and, 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 and enable uh, innovation through the use of your, um, you know, very sophisticated technology? Yeah, thank you for the question, because I think um, th this is, f for us, um, uh, the, the, let's say the, the, the we have three types of clients. We have the big brands, international brands, roughly 50%. Then you have the national brands, roughly 20%. And then you have the local brands and the small uh, businesses. We, uh, the, I think the strength of our industry is to be a, a multiplier from um, a, a, a small companies that are buying one location, two locations, three locations in a given city that where can be a city of, let's say, quite small city, to basically big, big clients doing national or international campaigns that we were discussing before. Yeah, I understand. So Startups phase. Yeah. Okay, so you so go so even below. Yeah, just, yes. just, just to stimulate yeah. the, the local town that it's in. And I see with digital te technology that you could have uh, just like uh, the 1% rule for art in, in yeah. a construction project, 1% of your, um, your view time is for local industries or is for local startups. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Is that something okay. you could consider? Sorry, I, I yeah. Okay, so th Thank this you. is something that today we are not tapping at, to be honest with you. This is something which... Uh, in, in the traditional world was more difficult to it's achieve true, because yeah, of yeah. logistics, yeah. but you're perfectly right. This is something that uh, actually could be quite interesting 
once we will have more boards. Today, out of 1.2 million locations worldwide in airports, subways, or cities, 12,000, a bit more than 12,000, 13,000 are digital screens, right. uh, all basically driven by, uh, as we said before, by a central control. So it will become 50,000 screens by basically 2015, certainly. So digital will certainly create new business model in our industry where we will be able to give access to uh, certainly uh, much smaller industries, much smaller businesses, and, and, and why not startups phase by uh, doing some uh, specific agreement. This is something that technology will, will allow us to do, where in the past it was basically almost impossible to. There is nothing impossible for businesses or entrepreneurs, but, but it was very <laughs> difficult from a logistics standpoint. Now, I think it, I'll, I'll pick it up. It's a good idea. I'll pick it up. Thanks. I'm going to have to draw things to a close because we have the uh, closing uh, se session in a few moments. Uh, but I'd like to thank our distinguished, distinguished panel. I'd also like to say that it's a very positive session, I think. I think re retail is alive and well. I don't think it's going to disappear. Uh, I think outdoor... Uh, Advertising has huge potential, and that last question really showed that as we move to a digital pl platform, uh, as opposed to paper and paste. Um this is gone for quite some time. <laughs> Sorry, I, I <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Anyway, but you have been living too long in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's still one. There's still one a cinema. Uh, Ad advertisement which they hand paint. But you still have a lot of paper paste yeah, we billboards do. in we Japan. Do. That's what I still on, see. On the rooftops. I, I still yeah. see that, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Anyway, thank you all very much indeed. <laughs>